welcome everybody into the latest edition of the usfl podcast interview series bringing you the latest from players coaches and personalities from around the united states football league today we have a very fascinating interview that i get to have a little bit different than we usually been doing you know again we're getting a lot of player interviews as of late love talking about player stories but sometimes we don't we don't realize how much goes into the behind the scenes action on the day-to-day for a league like this you know what else needs to be done to let this function as well um and so i get to bring in somebody who's been on behind the scenes in the background for season one and he's going to be definitely a part of season two as well it is andrew squara he's the assistant equipment manager for the united states football league and uh, he's also had some experience outside the usfl as well andrew uh, thanks for joining the show um how, how are you doing man how are things so far in the off season for you doing great can't wait for season two to come on on yeah i mean it's coming on coming on soon here uh not 75 days as of the day we're talking uh we put out a bunch of notices on their social media about that and you know you're gonna be uh gonna be quite busy i i my thing is i want to i just want to dive right into this so i actually have some buddies they do the equipment management side of sports um that I've gotten some tidbits on about this, but I'd love to just dive into your position. How, what is, how do you best describe your role with the league or this position in general? Uh, as an equipment manager assistant, I report to the equipment manager. There's one that we had last year, one was assigned to each team and they usually had an assistant as well. Uh, what we do is we assist the, um, basically we set up practices, uh, make sure the equipment's all good to go like the helmets shoulder pads cleats all that kind of stuff make sure it gets distributed uh sweatshirts and things like that too because they had to have workout wear Mm -hmm. uh pretty much and then we did that get them all set up for the beginning of the season then once the season starts going we get to have you know since we had everything in birmingham last year that made it a unique experience where you had eight teams with all of us all working together we kind of had uh in the convention center there at the BJCC, they had a one room that was set up for weight room and training and stuff like that for, and uh, for Mm -hmm. treatment, but then kind of, they used like the little uh, conference rooms around it. Each team had their own little one. So they all kind of like opened up and we all met in the middle, but we all worked together. And what it was, was, yeah, if there was anything, which was an easy part, like, Oh, if there was something wrong with a helmet, like, Oh, I need this kind of screw or this kind of chin strap or something. We could always kind of bounce off each other because we were all right there in the same location. But yeah, once the season starts going, we assist with the practices. Uh, you know, uh, we hike to the quarterbacks, uh, shag balls, things like mm-hmm. that, because we also had to set up the field beforehand. And mm-hmm. that was that was a unique experience last year as well, because we had the four practice sites. So I equated to that, you know, you, whenever you went on a field trip, you had your field trip buddy. Our field trip buddy was Tampa Bay, and we were we uh, Birmingham and Tampa Bay were together, and we were at the uh, Hoover site, which was just south of uh, Birmingham. Okay. So we were, and since we there's everybody had to share, so you had a morning practice and an an afternoon practice. So Birmingham had the morning practices. We go there beforehand, set it all up, you know, put out the tackling dummies, put out the balls, and you know, certain coaches want certain equipment, so like some of them like hey, you know one of the big things was trash cans that was always a fun thing trying to find trash cans for everybody really because <laughs> they, they, they use the trash tra- the trash cans are used to simulate uh either offense or defensive linemen i see so that's how they because we had tackling dummies and things like that but to spread everything out it's like oh and it's just like it's the common things that you can use right there like uh some of the coaches use like sometimes tennis balls to like for uh like defensive back drills or anything like that because for hand-eye coordination there was a lot of stuff that was done. And then uh, one of the things that I got the uh, special thing to do is that uh, coach Holtz took me aside like the first day and said, Hey, you know, we have a script that we follow for our practices. We have to be on time because again, we have our, uh, our you know, practice buddy coming in later on. We can't be late because they have sure. the buses coming sure. in and we can't have both teams on the field at the same time. So he kind of took me aside and said, Hey, you know, I want you to make sure we're, we keep on time. We, we, we you know, make sure we get to, cause we have like a special teams drill or you have like a quarterback drill. So they have everything lined out. And he was basically, I was kind of like, you know, coach holds his shadow. And, and I don't know if you, maybe I was in that United by football, who knows? <laughs> There's a couple <laughs> scenes I may have been, you know, you know, shadowing behind him. And my thing was always great. Cause I always just, we go there, you know, coach, you got like two minutes left in this, you know, one minute left to special teams. 
And basically, yeah, that's how, you know, because he was telling me that when he was at, uh, at in college and at uh, facilities, they have this thing called a digital board. Okay. Because it's basically it's a countdown clock for each segment. And so, like, like I said, the first day he goes to me and goes, you know what? You're going to be my human digital board. I'm like, okay, thanks, coach. <laughs> so that's what it is. <laughs> and he gave me a nickname that stuck the whole year and because he called me DB for digital board. <laughs> and it stuck. And I even, you know, I went to coach at the end of the year. I go, do you remember my name? He's like, it's DB. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the fun part. I mean, that's that's the cool thing that you're going to remember being a part of that um, organization and uh like i said and then also too the other fun part is once we're done with practice then uh you know uh my boss he would go over and make sure all the equipment and everything was good in the locker room i had the fun duty of doing laundry as well so i had to do oh. the laundry for all the players and the coaches and our uh we had the facility that we used you know because hey you got to keep the clothes clean you gotta get everyone there so we actually had laundry machines at uh, Legion Field. So it was okay. kind of like, but also two teams were practicing. So it was kind of like a weird thing, like, hey, I got to be here, but I'm not going to watch your practice because <laughs> I got to, you know, do the laundry. And yeah, we had a system down. It was like, oh, you know, and that's what we did. And then game day, it's a whole different, you know, phenomenon because what it was, was we had all the equipment, like I said, across the street at the convention center. So we had to load up all the player bags, get them across over to uh, protective, make sure that, you know, we get in there and the way we ran it, where you had multiple teams at multiple time, you know, like, cause you saw the schedules, it was like, mm -hmm. boom. And then next thing you know, like within an hour, we have another game coming on. Right. Right. And, and so we had to be really creative on locker room setups because there's not that many locker rooms at the stadium. So we kind of set it up that the first, you know, uh, teams had like the main locker rooms then there were like coaches locker rooms and other things and but that was the cool part about it is like we all work together and the grouping that we had of the eight teams some of them worked together in previous leagues some of them worked in like the nfl some of them worked in other you know and it, the cool part was is that we were kind of like a family because like i said when it's like hey i need this part or you get this or can you help me out with this and be like oh you know, everybody would work with each other. And that was what it's the team behind the teams. That's the cool part about the USFL. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think like you just pointed, like you talked about the family aspect in terms of that position being the different assistants like that, that alone, you know, it's a completely separate sect. And I think, like I said, when we introduced, you know, introducing in, I think a lot of people forget what goes on to help run an organization just one of these teams uh properly to do everything i'll be honest i didn't even i didn't even equate the uh setup for practices you know or things like that i knew you know i i understand like you know inventory for equipment or thing or like you know you got the laundry and things like that making sure you that people get clean equ clean equipment clean things for their items to make sure it's running functioning in a professional setting um but i mean i'll be honest one of the things i want to definitely talk to you about because you know, just having that hub setting and you're talking a little bit limited the resources and kind of just juggling some stuff to re kind of the timing of it is a little bit more fascinating. Cause I mean, in other professional sports, most of the time it's your venue, your spot, you get to have your things to yourself type of thing. This one, it's at least last year, you know, you have to juggle eight and basically an eight and one deal with what you got. Yeah. And that's the thing. I mean, it wasn't like we didn't have a lack of resources. It was just that we had to work together with the resources we have. Right. Right. And, and like I said, you know, yeah, you could say, Oh, this team has this venue. That's where they're going to be. That's where they're at. But for us, that was the, the cool part about it because like a lot of these guys knew each other. Um, I made friends with people that I have never met before. And it was so cool to meet them. And, you know, and then it's like, I'm excited to see them this year and it's like yeah because you know if they come back where are they going to be how they you know and for the whole dynamic of everybody that we had there it worked because everyone got along and so if yeah because it's like it's kind of it is a kind of a weird thing it's like oh you know usually yeah because even you know previously when i worked in the united football league we were there we were by ourselves <laughs> that's like we had our stuff that's where <laughs> we're at and then you go to other venues and they had their stuff at their place for us. It was like, Hey, you know, we, that's how kind of like, you know, keep it, you know, the, within the budget limitations, you, you shared sites, you shared equipment, 
you share the laundry facilities you you share you share the like i said the, the weight room was together with the with the uh, treatment room all the little locker rooms were all right next to each other it it helped that you know and travel costs the travel cost was basically to move everything across the street <laughs> so <laughs> right. i'm very intrigued to see how it goes this year because if we have the four sites how is it you know how do we transport things and we, I, like I said, I did that before previously in the United Football League. I know how the equipment moves from venue to venue when we had to travel. I'm just excited to see how this is going to play out this year because, yeah. again, it's great to have the four f- sites. Yeah, right. I mean, you're going to be uh, you're going to be one of the hubs. Actually, which uh, you, so you're I mean, you're with the so you're the Stallions one assistant. So you're you're basically staying. You're still are you going to be staying in Birmingham or is there a switch up? Uh, what what's there is a switch year? up. Uh, yeah, uh, I recently moved to Michigan. I'm uh, okay. I lived in California, but I was a Detroit Lions fan, unfortunately. Ah, <laughs> so, oh, I see. Uh, so, <laughs> I see. and I, I I got to present the opportunity, and when I knew that oh, there's the possibility of hubs being here, or like they said, the future plan was, you know, one hub, four hubs, and then let's go to cities afterwards. So Detroit was still going to be in play no matter what, either mm-hmm. this year or in 24. And I'm happy that it's this year in 23. So it's like, and I even had, I, it was the funniest thing. I just was it two nights ago. I got a, a, a direct message from Scooby after he announced right, right before he announced that he came back. Right. Yeah. From Scooby, right. <laughs> <laughs> I know that was, that was, that was, yeah, I got that fun. <laughs> no worries. But uh, no, he, he, uh, he direct messaged me and said, Hey, are you coming back? And I said, I'm coming back, but in a different facet. So uh being that i'm closer to that michigan hub i'm going to you know not like lebron i'm not taking my you know talents to south beach i'm taking my uh talents to the mitten state here so uh-huh. it's like i'm i'm going to be over here in michigan and and it's great you know for me as like like i said as i'm a lions fan and to have the opportunity to have the stars and the panthers play at ford field is just mind boggling for me it's like and uh like i said uh since I recently moved here, I was like, you know what? If I'm going to go to a Lions game, I'm going on Thanksgiving. And mm. I sat like right behind the end zone. And I'm like, and for me, I was like looking at it and I'm thinking, I'm like, you know what? Six months from now, I could be down there on the, on the field. I'm like, this is crazy. I love it. <laughs> that's right. I mean, that, I mean, that's gotta be a pretty cool feel. And just, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's in a different, it's in a different league, but just being able to say you can play in that same stadium, you know, um, you get to at least be part of and use those facilities. That's kind of neat to say, to have that under your cap. Yeah. And that's, that's the, that's the interesting part about it. It's like, if you look at the four, you know, hubs, Detroit actually is using a NFL facility, mm-hmm. you know, Memphis was a part-time NFL facility when the Oilers moved through, but it's for us, it's like, and then, Nothing against Birmingham, but Birmingham, but there you have their own spring sports and they've been there, you know, throughout the years and not the decades. They've had their stuff. So has Memphis. Mm -hmm. Canton is a great thing. And I'm like, uh, I was really, really excited that we got to go play the the, uh, playoff games in Canton because, yeah, I my time in Birmingham was great. I love Birmingham, especially since we were winning nine out of ten games. I'll take that every day. (laughs) True. (laughs) And. The response from the fans was great. Uh, and the thing is, yeah, yeah, I see a lot of people right now because one of the things for me is I'm a fan first. And even my boss who runs the whole league gave me a nickname of Fandrew, which is just, <laughs> well, that's how, you know, that's that's where if I, when we talk about the uh, UFL, that's kind of an interesting story there. But, but for me, I'm always a fan first because, and I want to make sure, you know, I had interactions with fans in Birmingham, you know, young and old. And I was like, I, when I was going in town, I talked to them. Uh, if I wore my stallion, like polo shirt, like when at the grocery store, people would ask me about it and I would sell up the league. I'm like, here we go. Let's go. Let's get, you know, come on out. It's 10 bucks. You know, kids are free. Let's go. And I've been kind of doing stealthily out here too, kind of my own little recon missions in Michigan. Uh, you know, going to Lions games, going to tailgates, going, hey, you know, do you guys know about, you know, the USFL? And people were so excited. Like even this weekend, I had a, I went to a tire store and this young 
a man about 20 something years old goes, I watched all the games and blah, blah, blah. And he was just rattling off players. I'm like, that's what we want. I mean, even if you didn't have a team, well, in your local market, now they are there in that local market, in that hub, people right. were still watching the games in Michigan. And for me, like I said, the, the vibe that we got from the Birmingham games when we had those big crowds, I'm thinking the same kind of thing. It's going to happen in Detroit. It's going to happen in Memphis. And hopefully, because we saw the, what happened in the playoff games for Canton too. Mm-hmm. I think I think that there's a lot of excitement, especially in Detroit. You know, Memphis. I I knew I knew that there was a good possibility. A lot of and you you know you're you were in the UFL, and there's been other, of course, plenty of other leagues that you know you see some cities that are like, what are the ones that are big but not like too big, or they don't have NFL markets. Memphis is been historically one of those that has had time and time again, and this time they get the showboats back in Detroit. I mean, even with you and you know this too well. You know, through and through, loyal, dedicated football fan base, no matter what the circumstance is. So that, that that's pretty cool to hear people that are thrilled to see that the Panthers are returning. Not to mention, you know, you still can throw around last professional football team to win a championship in the state of Michigan. So that also uh, is something you could put under your belt as well when you can reference the history of the team as well again, too. Yeah, I was I was in a. I was in a, you know, funny thing was I was during the off season, like got here, I was in a job interview and, and there's like, they saw on my resume, they saw USFL and they're like, Oh, like I go, yeah. about, you know, teams, we had the Michigan Panthers and the, the guy was there like going, Hey, the Michigan Panthers in 83 were actually more popular than the lions. I'm like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Cause they were <laughs> yeah. winning. And that's the, and that's the thing. And they're, a very passionate fans here of you know not only you know michigan michigan state and the uh, the uh, smaller schools as well that are in the area but also the lions fans i mean if you saw anything this season they were selling out games and standing room only towards the end of the season and it was packed and that excitement is good thing for the usfl because it plays mm-hmm. off the funniest thing was yeah i would find a place there was a local place i would watch the lions games every week but Great thing was when I'm watching Fox, I see the commercial for the USFL and I give a little like, you know, little happy, you know, happy dance, a little clap and I'm good to go. And people in the place were like, what are you talking about? I'm like, oh, let me tell you what's coming. I'm like, you just hold on. Panthers are coming back. We don't know when yet, but now they officially announced it last week. And I'm like, that's even better. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'll, I got to ask you while we're at it, because this came out, I think, just after the announcement last week. Are you thrilled to be playing on that new turf over in Ford Field? Yeah. The Panthers will be the first one to christen it. Yeah, because they were, they announced they were doing the, redoing the turf right at the end of the season last year uh, for the Lions season, like right at the uh, – because I went to the January 1st game, and then I were on the road after that in uh, Green Bay. Mm-hmm. And so right after they left on their New Year's, they're like, oh, we're going to replace the field. I'm like, ooh, now this is even more interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> and, and, and the cool part is – the community's behind it. Like I said, I'm, it's like an informal poll, but like, yeah, I just mention it when I'm at sporting events or things around town. And they're just like, yeah, you know, I, you know, a sporting goods store that it was around here had the shirts from our league last year. They didn't even have a team in town. The team was like, you know, hundreds of miles away, but there was still that energy. There's still that, Hey, I want my dad watched the original Panthers. I can watch the Panthers now, you know, mm-hmm. they're on Fox and NBC affiliates I can watch all the games you know there's all the the new technology that's part of it and it's exciting football to watch yeah oh it's good it's good football is what I put it as absolutely I'm I'm thrilled um you know one thing but and I one thing before we jump into the UFL combo because I do want to get to that as you hinted okay (laughs) um before we do that I have one I have one other thing I got to ask you know so obviously you guys had everything managed down in Birmingham this past year um how was the process of at least moving gear up to canton ohio like what do you got to go through to set things up to, for a move like that oh that was a, that was a fun and exciting move <laughs> okay <laughs> well, well the good thing was we only had to move half a league and True. so basically what it was was we rented a truck and basically again like i said like the, the beforehand the coaches like have certain equipment they wanted so we made sure we had enough equipment for the, you know, the teams that we had that were practicing and we're like, okay, so it was New Jersey, New Orleans, Philly and us. And so it's like, okay, so we got all of our stuff. Uh, 
um, got all their player bags. They were either on the planes with the players coming up or uh, on the truck that was that we rented and was bringing up. So we had uh, a local guy drive up the truck, you know, that from one of our uh, practice sites. And so he and his assistant drove the truck up. Myself, since I had my car, I drove all the way out from California to Alabama. I was oh, like, okay. <laughs> so I was like, so we wanted to get ahead of the, the, the crowd basically. So I was like, all right. So my boss who uh, ran the whole league, cause we had a central uh, USFL equipment manager. Then each team had an individual one. Then they had assistance under them. So it's kind of like, that's how the, the tree went. And so I was like, all right, I go, you want to, you want to go for a ride? We're going from Alabama to Ohio. So we got in Ohio and you know, now I can say it too. I did transport equipment. I, so that was, is legitimate because I had the championship balls that you saw on the field. Yeah. yeah. I had them in my car because I wanted to make sure that you know, we didn't want to put them on the plane or the truck or get lost or anything. Cause it was in my site. Cause we drove straight up all, all day from Birmingham, Alabama up to Cleveland. Cause that's where we stayed. We, uh, all four teams stayed in downtown Cleveland, which was great. Um, so, and then we also uh, practice at a local uh, college right next pretty much next door to the browns train uh facility in okay. Gray, ohio so they're like we were right there almost backing up to it and it was great the the, the school was helped out all the uh, teams we had locker rooms set up in their you know on their field we just brought up all, all of our stuff there we brought on the equipment we set up the fields kind of like what we did in birmingham this time we did it uh outside cleveland and then the, we would have the players come down from cleveland into canton we'd play the games you know, and then we had the, like I said, we had the truck as well. And then the, we played the championship game. And this is what happened. We loaded up all the equipment on that truck right after the game. They drove right after the game. The game was over, zero zeros on the clock, clean up the locker room, kick the guys out with their champagne and cigars. And like, okay, guys, we got to roll. And so they, we loaded up the truck. They went back down to Alabama. And then for me, I was like, okay, so I was staying and I was like, okay, my season's done, so I'm going to drive back. So I drove back to Cleveland, and then all the players flew out on July 4th. That's what a lot of them did, and they flew back that day. And by the time they got there, the truck was already there because <laughs> they <laughs> drove throughout the night. And that's the cool part. I mean, and that's the – the we had community involvement. We had people in Birmingham. The people of Alabama were really excited to have the Stallions back, to be a good team, and everyone was willing to help out, and that's, that's the – the aspect of it that was so amazing because it was it made it it made the job fun and then for me it was like the weirdest part because like i couldn't figure out how like a few months earlier it's kind of like one of those things like the record scratch and you know how did i end up here you know kind of thing. it's like <laughs> yeah I, I used to, I, I worked for a health uh company back in uh, california and then six months later i'm in the field at the hall of fame with confetti cannons going off and players and we're you know celebrating and you know i'm holding the trophy i'm like okay this is surreal how did i get to this point <laughs> <laughs> that that is that is kind of nut, nuts to think about i mean i i I I probably could not imagine that right now. I, I I'm just a guy that I got credentials to be at that game, so that was my own thing. But just to think, like, to get that kind of pivot like that in like a year's time to do that that oh, kind of was, avenue has to be an incredible feeling. Yeah, there's, I'm, I'm counting the blessings that I had because I was in a real fortunate situation. And it's again, it from my prior experience what it was, but no, I'm not really. I, I didn't go to school for equipment management. There are some that did, and there's some great player. There's some great equipment managers and uh, that work hard every time they know, they know their stuff inside and out. You, you, there's a lot of interesting facets to the job and they know mm -hmm. so much and the wealth of experience that we had in the USFL from the year. I mean, it's centuries of, you know, knowledge that we had there. And for me, I was like, I'm like, I'm kind of like new. I'm not really, you know, I'm like, again, why am I here? It's, but what, what it was, was I was given the opportunity and I was like, I go, yes, I'm not the head equipment guy, but I will work as hard as I can and help everybody out and be a good assistant there. I, I love, love hearing this stuff. See, this is why I like, I like lovely stories like that from last year and all that. It, this, it's, you know, it, it's fun. It's fun to get kind of those connections and, you know, opportunities for everybody. Again, I, you know, we talk, I've talked on here. It's not just players, you know, even not coaches, you know, some other people, they get their, 
chance to go in with a bit more football. And, I mean, now credit you were you have done some football in the past, but you know, just getting to get back into that sphere has to be nice. I mean, uh, you know, the UFL was it's kind of weird to think about it, but it's now been eleven years, close pushing eleven years since the UFL. It would it would be eleven years this fall. I call it like ten and a half. <laughs> so <Fair> enough, <laughs> but, but uh, yeah. The UFL, people are not familiar with it, was United Football League. It started in 2009. It was a – they had like a showcase season the first season. So they had four teams only. They played in the fall. Mm-hmm. And they had a team, the California Redwoods, the Las Vegas Locos, the uh, Florida Tuskers, and the uh, New York uh, uh, Sentinels. Yes. I should know it. I I have I have a mini helmet over on the other side of the room. I should, know, I should remember need to make sure you're testing yourself. Yes. That's right. Uh, but what, what they did the first year was kind of like, you know, New York played, I believe they played in Hartford. They did some other locations. Uh, the team, because I lived outside of Sacramento and the team played that we had the California Redwoods. Uh, Denny Green was our coach. Um, we had a couple of uh, players that were there. Uh, if people remember uh, John David Washington, who, you know, has been a movie star now with uh, Black Klansman and uh, Tenet and movies like that. He was our running back back in 09. Oh, and okay yeah yeah and so but the, the, yeah it, look it up <laughs> i'm gonna have to i didn't i didn't put that together all right yeah it's uh denzel's washington's son and uh mr washington did uh, attend a few games when i was in sacramento as well but what happened was they, that year they kind of played they played actually at well it's now oracle park but it used to be at&t right there on the water so they had football in a baseball stadium which was kind of fun mm-hmm. and they were the california redwoods and my buddy and I, we went to the games. We brought my son, things like that. We went to San Francisco. They played in San Francisco and San Jose. But we made a day of it. You go down there, you have fun. And we got on there. We got our jerseys because we thought, this is great. It's fun. Like a cool, because we, you know, remember like the old World League of American Football, which had the Sacramento Surge. And mm-hmm. then they went to the CFL as the gold miner. So, you know, alternate football, I kind of like. It's great. I mean, I love my NFL, but I love – springtime or fall or different leagues arena ball things like that because that you know what it is it's more football yeah. and so we we can we uh we had you know since we're the redwoods and i'm gonna try to be a little creative we came up with a cheer of tree fence not defense it's tree fence tree fence so so we had like the logo on like a like poster board and we got on the jumbotron a couple times and we were like very you know into it and and the next year, they decided, kind of like, in a way, kind of like what the USFL is doing. They went from the different locations. Then they're like, okay, well, now we're going to have, like, a, a city identity. So the Redwoods became the, the Sacramento Mountain Lions. Then, you know, uh, you know the, the Sentinels became, like, there was the there was a Hartford Colonials. There was the Florida Tuskers. Vegas stayed the same. And then they added, like, the Omaha Nighthawks and different teams like that. So we went to events and we were all there and I was sitting there is at the, uh, one of the, like the, uh, tryouts and okay. the, the mountain lions front office said, well, what are you doing here? I'm like, cause this was at, uh, in the Bay area. And they're like, what are you doing here? I'm like, well, I brought my son. We make a day of it. We're going to watch it. They're like, Oh, cool. Do you want to be our fan club? You know, president guy. I'm like, Oh, that'd be great. Cool. And this is kind of where the fan drew kind of comes in. <laughs> <laughs> and right before the season they had a contest of to be commissioner for a day which i did win because oh, i wrote in a good essay okay. and stuff and so so i became the ufl commissioner so technically if you look at the line of commissioners i i technically should be one of them but <laughs> 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 but it's no it was great because they they flew me out to omaha and i got to you know and again it's kind of like the weird thing like the usfl championship it was like i was at a luncheon and for me, there was uh, Indomitian Sue's uh, mom and sister were there. He just got drafted by the Lions because he's from Nebraska. You know, went to yeah. Nebraska. The mayor of Omaha, the commissioner, uh, John Durant, uh, like a Heisman Trophy winner. I'm like, again, how did I get to this spot? <laughs> but it was great. We got to wine and dine, go around town. We met like Joe Moglia. And then but that was before he went over to uh, uh, Coastal Carolina and turned around that program. Mm-hmm. But he was involved with the with the United Football League at that time. But it was kind of cool to go to all these different things and be there. And then when when I got back, this was kind of like when Facebook was first starting. Mm-hmm. So what I would do is I had I borrowed my son's little digital camera and I would take pictures and post them on like Facebook. 
and the players grandmothers and moms and aunties and everybody came by like that's great because we can't see him play and then, yeah our first season we had dante culpepper as our quarterback and yes. omaha had jeff garcia so there were names there in the league they were at the end of their careers but it was all right and i even told dante when i saw him i was like i go thank you for trying but i know that team was never going to win that was that right after the lions winless season and he was like, uh, I know. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but it was cool to meet the players and the coaches that were there. And that's what kind of established this pattern of being the fan. And then I did the fan club thing the next year in 10 or 11. And then uh, the uh, my uh, friend and boss, Bruce, came to me and said, hey, if you're going to be here like every day for practice, why don't you work for me? If we come back in 12, you can work for me. And that's what I did. So I got to come back in 12. Mm -hmm. and we had uh we had at the time we had vegas omaha uh virginia destroyers were new they came back in they were a couple of years but they that was their mm -hmm. second year there and us so we kind of had like a we and then this time we played at the baseball stadium which is now sutter health park but used to be Rayleigh field again it's football and baseball stadiums it's kind of goofy but it's it's great you know don't go too far on the end zone or you're going to end up in the first row of seats uh, on the first base <laughs> right. line or in the there dugout who knows <laughs> yes <laughs> but it it was kind of that cool thing. And that's how I got into it. He, you know, I, I came on as a, as his, one of his second assistant. Uh, I got to learn from him because he has his experience. His brother has experience with the, with the chargers for decades. So it was like, we knew, you know, he, the, the wealth of knowledge that I learned from him and that it kind of was like, thank you for getting me involved in this. Yeah. I, you know, it's like, I'm not the most athletic. I'm not the strongest. I'm not this. I'm more of a fan. But to be there or being part of it, you know, again, this is like now I I have the experience of what we did in the UFL of, you know, putting on stuff on the plane, get the plane. We, Yeah, I, I still have yet to figure out the schedule, how we ended up playing Virginia twice in a short season in Virginia. But whatever. <laughs> it's like we fly across the country. I'm like, I'm like Sacramento to um, to uh, to Newport News to uh, Virginia Beach is a, is a far distance. I was like, that's a little bit too much, but it was great. It was you know, but then but again with the small staffs and you all work together, so it's the you know we work with the athletic trainers, we work with the football ops guys, we work everybody works together. There's this because yeah, what you see every day is you see the coaches, you see the players. Mm -hmm. but you don't see everybody that's behind or, or you and then sometimes you see front office because yeah you'll see gms and things like that but there are people that work hard every day on the games and to get the teams ready and for me i was always amazed like you know how well like athletic trainers did and yeah and when i saw the incident that happened this year and i was like okay no you should never be touching athletic trainers or not let them do their yeah. job yeah and it, but but for me, I always respected what they did because they have to do so much. And it's like, we have what we, we all have our jobs that we have to do during a game and each one of us work together. It's like, yeah. And there was stuff like that too. Cause like, if we set up practice, sometimes we helped out the trainers because guess what? In Birmingham, you're going to need some Gatorade because it's going to get warm. <laughs> so we made sure we made sure to get the ice or stuff like that. Cause if we're already done with our job we want to help everybody else out. And they would help us out, you know, clean up or do something else at the, at the end of the games too. And that's the best part, you know, working together as a team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Having that, having that mentality, you know, I, 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 I love the, I, I love just the passion sometimes drives what you want to do. You know, you set your mind, you set your mind to it or you, you, you dedicate yourself. You love your, your stuff enough, you know, anything can be possible. And, uh, you know, I, I, that's pretty amazing story with the UFL right there. You know, the fan, the fan drew becomes basically part of the, part of a organization. Yeah. And, and the, the coolest part was we had uh, interactions too. Um, they just recently played this weekend, the uh, NFL PA bowl down in yes. uh, Los yes. Angeles. And what it was, was after we got done with the UFL season, since uh, we had, I had connections in it, I got invited down and I would come out and hang out for the weekend and work. And one of the coolest parts was, is that because they you saw that they have uh, former players become coaches. Like this year, mm -hmm. I think it was Eddie George was one of the coaches. Yes. Uh, but the year, one of the years I went back in, uh, I think it was 14, 15, but Dante Culpepper was there. And it was like, Dante was our quarterback in 10 and he knew me from the fan club stuff. And I went to him and I said, hey, 
Dante, how's it going? He's like, hey, hey, how's your son doing? I'm like, and that, again, blew my mind. It's like, dude, how do you, you remember me? And you remember my son and things like that. And that just tells you how, how much these players are, are, you know, they're they're human beings as well. They have their families and stuff. And some of them are so great and so nice. And they're like, they, they remember you. And it's like, again, for me, it was like, I'm, you know, not to, you know, put yourself down, but it's like, I'm nobody. I'm just a fan. I'm just nobody and whatever. And it's like, no, he's like, you know, you work with us you were always there you helped out you know you you did the fan stuff then you know but he was going by the time i did the equipment stuff but it's that kind of thing and like i said like you know i got the message from scooby say like, hey are you still coming by i'm like i'm sorry dude but i even told him i go hey when the schedule comes out if birmingham comes up here he's like ah yep i'll hang out with you man <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> yeah so that was cool you know i got it because that was a, a funny joke in itself too that you know because, yeah, for, again, for me, like I said, I was a fan. Mm -hmm. And I was in Alabama. My, my, most of my family and friends are all in California. And one of the things I would do is, you know, because I, I was on the sideline, I would, you know, basically play, play Where's Waldo with my family back home. Because they'll be like, I go, hey, I'm wearing this polo, this hat, and I have a sweatband, this color. And they would be like, oh, I see you behind Coach Holtz. Or I see you over here. I see you over there. Right, and watch out like, I get on the sidelines. <laughs> I get on the sidelines. And then the funny story was there, too, was when uh, when Scooby first did the shark dog because he got busted because he got uh, penalized for doing, like, the rodeo thing beforehand. Right, right. And so when yeah. he did the shark dog, he did the thing. First person he comes over, he high-fives me and the first person when he comes off the field. Then a couple minutes later, during the broadcast i believe because i haven't watched it yet but i get it from my family they're like we hear scooby talking to somebody explaining shark dog and it sounds like you i'm like yeah it probably was because i was standing right next to him and we were talking about it <laughs> and it was it was great because because yeah because uh scooby was from the uh, northern california area where i was you know grew up some places and so we would riff back and forth and stuff and and him and like jmar and alex and there's so many Peyton I'm like all these guys were so cool everybody on the team worked together and it was it was a it was a fascinating experience and I, I, I you know I will never forget it from this point on I, I think I think right safe to say that is uh that is something that you're that is definitely gonna be cherished <laughs> if, if, if I don't know if that's a minimum I take away from this conversation then I then I think I've done all right but well, that's that's the thing too. It's like I'm, I'm still waiting to get that championship ring. I don't know well, where that. And I, you you jumped where I was going to ask because yes. you technically are, were you said you were signed to the stallion. So that by yes. championship ring rules in sports, you should get yes. one, right? We were we uh we were all sized in Cleveland, uh right before right. the championship game, uh us and the stars were there. Now the ironic thing is if I end up working for the the stars they all look at me and be like hey <laughs> or am i the good luck charm <laughs> that's the other oh thing. man <laughs> I, I mean i'll be the good luck charm and bring the championship either to the panthers or the stars whoever wants me there i'm like we'll, we'll work from there time to get number two <laughs> now if that happens what will happen in team three i think everybody will want me then in year three <laughs> yeah seriously most Mo the most requested equipment manager the assistant. In the why <laughs> he's, he's not really he's not really that good but he's really lucky <laughs> please man we we want to bring we want to bring one to our city you don't understand <laughs> yeah i'm like the lucky rabbit's foot i don't know but yeah that would be kind of interesting to see yeah because uh, uh i was thinking about that i go oh because but that was one of the 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 best parts for me was the the playoffs there mm -hmm. because like i said i made friends on other teams and it was really tough for me like our first game because i was friends with the equipment manager for the breakers and it was like it was really hard when like we beat them but mm -hmm. the first person i went to go find on the other side of the field was him and i was like dude you know here's a hug dude i'm sorry man but he's like no we're good we're good this is fine you know you get you take the next level and then the next game i mean that championship game was just excitement back and forth 
and same kind of thing when when the when we beat the stars i went right back over because another friend of mine is a stars equipment manager went straight to him yeah same thing i'm like dude i was like you know hey and but the <laughs> there's a there's a quick story which was funny because we were down in uh mobile alabama and we had to get i uh, had to get him over to houston and okay. we were in the car together and i was like all right i was like i'm gonna change my uh my uh, screen on my uh, phone because I got the little uh, USFL champions with the stallions and I make sure that everyone would text me. So I'm driving and he, or he'll be driving. He's it'll pop up. He's like, Oh, come on, man. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. it's like, it's like, don't remind me. Don't put salt in the wounds. I'm like, yeah, just, you know, just rub it in a little bit. Star wound there. ruins. Just rub it in. <laughs> just a little more but everyone's funny. like I said, every, everyone was cool about it. And it was like, yeah, it was, it was a great experience from, you know, again it's it's that i'm interested to see how it's going to happen this year because that teamwork and camaraderie is going to be shifted yeah because all eight of us were together now you're going to break it up and we have you know four groups of two we're probably going to be really good friends with the people that we have in you know michigan and, and philly are going to be really good friends and so will everybody else who is ever in the hub cities but it's like i kind of miss that little thing and it's going to be like That'll be the greatest thing when we get to play them or go to their venue and be like, Hey man, I missed you from last year. Or this is what's going on. But that's the best aspect of it. You know, the, the friendship and the teamwork that we built over the last year in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. Right. I, that, that dynamic will be unique, but I, I think maybe if at the least it'll make your interactions. If you, you know, teams visit, it will be a little more special. Like, Hey, good to see you again for the first time in a while or something like that. You know? Yeah. That's, that's what I'm really excited. Like I said, I am when that schedule comes out, I will circle that Birmingham day either in Birmingham or up here. Because Ooh, those yeah. are gonna be the the either one if we play either well, hopefully we play up here and they play down there. But whenever we do, I'm like, those are gonna be the best days because I'm gonna be able to see everybody again, you know, hang out with the players again, talk to them, just say, Hey, how you know, they'll probably you know give me enough grief you know because again i've i've talked to a couple few of them off you know at on the off season here and you know, bouncing back you know uh but it was great to be a part of that and be in that locker room and some of the friendships that i made not only with the my co-workers but also with some of the players that were there and for me being a, a dad they were kind of like all my all my boys i try to take care of them all <laughs> like you guys got any questions you got any issues you got anything come talk to me you know and that's what it was. We, we, there were a lot of great players and it looks like a lot of them are going to come back as well. And Hey, if there's new ones, that's what, what that's the fun part too. Mm -hmm. New, new, fr <laughs> new friends, new, uh, new, new teammates, you know, new teammates. All right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Cause I, it, it's great. And that's, that's, that's cause again, a lot of these, if you know, I'm, I'm going on the tangent here, but it's, uh, you know, a lot of these, alternate leagues only lasted one year or less in recent history mm -hmm. if you look at it because it's like yes the aaf xfl2 you know even the xfl1 you know things like that and it's like yeah it's kind of a bummer to see that some of the uh guys i worked with some of the players have gone to another league but you know what we'll see what happens in a couple of years who who's who's standing there and 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 like i said i'm still a fan too and i see that and i have to like you know, bite my tongue sometimes when I see some of these things, I want to like, Oh, I got to want to say something. Sure. But no, I, I can't, I can't be that. <laughs> you have to, <laughs> you have to have some decorum and be like, no, you go ahead on that, on that idea. That's fine. Like, yeah. Or was, I did reply to one person who said something like, you know, you know, why they have four field. They're only going to have 500 fans there. I'm like, no, 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 no. I, I, uh, I, doubt there will be only 500 fans there i i would be if they if, geez i mean if five 500 fans there boy i'm i'm gonna be questioning what i'm doing the show for then if i don't see because i i have like you already like you're talking i talk to i'm i'm confident detroit's gonna be good i i really do um and i just can't wait to see them fill that up for at least at least michigan panthers games it'll be freaking fun i i'm planning on being there for the home opener so it's gonna be a sweet time. All right, so I gotta get take you to get a Detroit Coney dog. What's going on, man? <laughs> yeah, well, hey, look, I've had I've had a few Coney's. I got a I got an uncle who lives in Novi. Actually, he helps with the I guess city planning. But um, 
uh my main thing is here's the the one that i haven't gotten to um i keep getting told i need to go to buddy's pizza that's my main one when i go up there next time so um but yeah i mean coney dogs you know i'm stuff like that i'm up for you know but i gotta get yeah, i gotta yeah. get a buddy's pizza that's my main i can't leave the city without it all right you come up here you you go to Buddy's Pizza, I'll get you a slice. That's how we'll work it, all right? <laughs> all right. Well, we're going to be hooking up. We'll see if we can hook up. Like, but, I, said, like I said, like I, like I told you before, I'm a fan first, and I appreciate everybody who does the podcast because guess what? You're helping the USFL out. And everybody who does this kind of stuff, who, you know, they wear their stuff, they wear their gear around town because, again, get get the word out. I mean, yes, it's great to see the commercials, but you only saw the commercials because a certain other network didn't want to have us on there, you know. Yeah. I'm not gonna say anything. <laughs> but if you watch the, if you watch the if you watch the NFL games, you're like, oh wait, I didn't see any commercials there. But if you're watching Fox, boom, 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 there's that. And, and it's <laughs> right. like that was great. That's that's what you need. And it's, it's and I'm 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 intrigued to see what happens in Canton. I like the new uh the the, the new uh style for the Maulers. I'm like yeah, black and gold. Hey, if, if you gotta be in the team, you know, in the city, you might as well match everybody. <laughs> it's like yeah. I don't know. That's what they do. People ask and you receive. That's that's definitely what the message for that was. Absolutely. Yeah, and I I, yeah, I I I've yet to go down there. The weather's been kind of goofy, but I'm gonna try to see if I can get down there. I see, you know, uh, the facilities they got down there at uh, uh, for the practices, and they're talking about the hotels and things. I'll find that information out more later on. But this is gonna be an, uh, an an interesting dynamic because again, Birmingham is such an alternate football mecca. And it's, a, you know, Southern hospitality, everybody's there, everybody's, mm-hmm. and they love football. And it's like, yeah, now it's like Detroit, like, oh, well, Detroit's different, but it's going to be, it's a big city. It's the biggest city that they have in the league right now as a hub. Yes. Yeah. So largest media market too, top 15 yeah. in the U.S. Exactly. And that's the, you know, that's the, if it's, it's like, okay, yeah, well, Canton small, but you know, Bur- you know, Memphis and Birmingham, but it's like, you are in a major city now. And this is kind of like what I think is kind of like the appetizer for the eventuality when they do go to other sites, because because you're going to see it's like, okay, how does the USFL do in a big city? Because if they do go to back to Tampa, Houston, other places, those are large cities as well. And it's like it's not a knock on Birmingham or Memphis or anything like that. I love those cities, too, because. Yeah, like I said, I spent half my year there. In oh, Alabama. Well, yeah. <laughs> and, and I have a and now I have a Calabama accent. It comes out every once in a while. Too, so Alabama. But Calabama. And now it's gonna be Calabama, Michigander soon, you know. Oh well they're they're talking about, you know, you know, here enjoy your pop out here. I was like, What? What's that called? <laughs> Soda? Oh, what? there you go. Yep, that you're already on the track. <laughs> oh yeah, but it's but the like it's and the cool thing is the Midwest, like I said, Canton and Michigan are gonna be great. And it's because they love their football and it's like, yeah, the people from Pittsburgh can make it over. And that's one of the biggest, you know, drawbacks. A lot of people are like, Oh no, but I want to see how the USFL does in a big city for future, you know, the, the franchise that we have now. And, you know, I don't hear anything yet, but I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for expansion too. <laughs> it's like, mm, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Got some ideas someday, but uh, yeah, if you see the trademarks and stuff, that's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, that, that's nice. So that's like I'm a Chicago like sports cities. fan after all. Just, just saying. So, <laughs> ooh, now that that's that'd be an interesting part, and that's that's the best part I see too. And you know, like I said, being a fan, it's to see the speculation of things. People like, oh, you know, if we go to Pittsburgh, this is where we'll play, or the, if we go here, and like some of them, you're like, uh, no, because, <laughs> <laughs> but. but I, I, I love the enthusiasm, but like, yeah, Chicago be like, oh, where we can go? Well, hey, maybe you can go to Soldier Field. Who knows? Hey, look. <laughs> is, I don't know. Someone, there's a, someone's uh, there's a lot there. going on there. But but that's the cool I mean, like, yeah, is there like you can use MLS stadiums, college stadiums, things along those lines. But again, it's kind of like that dynamic. You want to I I love the business model here mm-hmm. because, like I said, we're in a year two. Yeah. A lot of those other previous leagues never had a year or two. It's a good marketing tool. Exactly. And it's just like, well, oh, we're all, you're all in a hub in one. And we're like, don't worry about it. You know, trust the, trust the plan, follow the roadmap that you'll be fine. <laughs> I, I, I love this. A- Andrew, a hey, look, 
thank you so much for joining the show. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing the season. I, I like, I will end this by saying if I am like, I come out to the home opener, I'll keep in touch. I would love to, like I said, get, get, get a slice or something with you. Um, but yeah, man, keep us, yeah. Keep us posted online. Love to hear how that's going up in Michigan. It sounds like it's just gonna be a fun year for you getting up there. I'm just waiting for it. I'm like, please give me my assignment. Tell me what I'm doing. <laughs> but like I said, yeah. And like, it's, if, if you talk to anybody around, you know, in Birmingham about me I'm like like I said I'm a fan first there's a lot of guys that I work with and things like that and it's like I know how it is and you know if you come up I will be friendly to you during the games or whatever if I can because I'm busy working still but sure. but yeah but it depends on which team you're wearing so it's okay <laughs> come up here <laughs> but no worries it's all right it's cool but yeah I, I I I appreciate what you guys do I appreciate what the opportunity I was given and I can't wait for season two to start.